So it went something like this, and, you know, Daniel and I had a disagreement yesterday, so, um, you know, I kind of had my feelings all hurt. It was a very quiet house because we weren't talking to each other because that's what mature people do. And anyway, so I thought I'd come to my yarn collection and bury my feelings into the yarn itself, but I thought, how can I emotionally hurt myself more? I'll put the knitting needles and really do myself in. So I decided to teach myself how to do a double basket weave uh, knitting scarf yesterday because I'm knitting the boy a scarf. Why am I doing him anything? I don't know. So I'm going to teach you today on how to get started. It's an eight row repeat. So if you want to bury your feelings into something and kind of cry at the same time, I can introduce you to this project. And uh, it actually turned out pretty cool, but uh, I'll leave that to you. So finally, because I'm bearing my feelings into this video, if you need to correct me on how to hold my knitting needles, or you think I should do it this way, tossing my ear in this way, you know, maybe bending over, doing a pretzel and doing it between my legs, I don't care. So if you need to do those kind of comments, let me just reach through right now and start breaking your fingers from leaving a comment like that. Um, of course, if you know a better way, of course, do it. And I'm just showing you the technique on how to do the double basket weave. So take what you can from this video, but of course there's always a better way and I'm never gonna be a perfect host for everybody. So without further ado, let's start getting our box of tissues and start crying this thing through. <laughs> So with my pointer stick, knitting needles are good for that too. Um, we're going to be using Karen Tea Cakes. This is discontinued. This is called Forest. And this here is the double basket weave. So I'm just going to put this aside. And you can see it's a nice, easy repeating pattern that goes over and over. I'm kind of a lazy knitter. Well, maybe a typical man. <laughs> Fast and furious. Um, I do like the bulkier yarns for knitting because um, my patient level is like the lifespan of a gnat. It doesn't last very long. So I find with the chunky yarn, I can have a lot of satisfaction with the knitting. And I'm going to show you this particular concept, but I'm gonna show you another piece of paper and you can freeze the screen at that point and I will be back in a second. So on screen, this was my instructions from last night. So I just kind of write just key concepts. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so I just write down it and I just make a check mark as I go. I tried doing this without a check mark and I ended up uh, ripping the whole thing out because I started losing where I was. So if you want to freeze the screen, here's some instructions. So do that now. So I'll just explain it to you. So row number one is just knit across. It's the knit stitch. Row number two, you're going to knit three purl one and you'll continue to do that over and over and the final three stitches will be knit three. Number three is just knitting. Number four is the same thing as here. Number five is just knitting. And number six is when it changes and it reverses in order to create this look. So you'll knit the first stitch, so knit one, and then in the bracket you're going to repeat all the way across. And so it's going to be purl one and then knit three. So purl one and knit three, and then the final two stitches that you'll have left is a purl one and then a knit one at the end. Then you'll be knitting again in row number eight and row number, or sorry, row number seven, and then row number eight, it's the same thing as you did here, okay? So then once you get this done, you go back to the very top. So if you would like to do this and you like to make something other than what I'm showing you, the multiple number is four plus so it's four plus three. So you'll do four, 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 four. And when you're happy with the width, just add three more st uh, stitches at the end when you're going to start. Today, I'm going to show you the twist and transfer cast on. If you prefer a different cast on, please, uh, by all means, do that. And this here scarf is a total of 15 stitches. So there is, you got your 12, right? That, which is a multiple of four, and then another three, which gives you to 15. And this is what this will be. So it's really kind of fun and it changes. And I find the color changing of the Karen Cake line just keeps me more interested. Let's talk about these knitting needles. So on screen, I'm using an eight millimeter, and that's a US 11 circular knitting needle. You don't need a very big um, piece that's attaching. A lot of people prefer the circular. And uh, so if you would like to feel extra pain, make sure you keep stabbing yourself every time you do the stitches. It just makes the pain just accelerate even more. It makes your day great. So I'm going to be just demonstrating with a different set of knitting needles today. And I'm just going to be demonstrating with Peyton's Inspired just to get yourself started. And I will be using a six and a half millimeter size US 10 and a half, again, circular, and I'll be demonstrating that in a second. So without further ado, let's begin. 
So let's be, do this as if we're a beginner and I'm going to start with a slip knot. So just point your finger. If you have a better way, of course, by all means do it. So that's just standard. If you have better ways, you know, do it. So wrap your finger twice. So see the strand, just go twice, pinch, and then play the game of leapfrog. So just take this one and leap over and then take this new one and leap over top of your finger. And that's a slip knot. On YouTube here, we have tutorials available on how to do steps like this. So this is called the slip knot. So it doesn't matter which size side that you put on, just stick a needle through and just pull the yarn that is leading to the ball onto it. When you pull onto it, don't be a mad person. Like you might be angry anyway, you're mad at somebody, but when you go to pull on it, make sure that it's not to the point where you can't slide it up and down your shaft. Isn't that fun? <laughs> okay, serious stuff now. So this would be considered one loop out of 15. So remember it's multiples of four plus three. So you go four, 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 four. And when you're happy with the width, just add three so that you have that multiple of three plus four. So let's begin with the twist and transfer concept. So to twist and transfer, you're going to stick this one here where the sun doesn't shine behind this needle. And so you're just going to slip in and see this knot here. You're just going to make room and you're going to just force it through. So just force it through the same knot, but make sure that the needle comes to the back side of the cross. So now you got a cross shape. And I want you just to put your hand. Now, anybody, we have videos specifically on how to hold um, the knitting yarn. You can decide that what's going to work for you. So I want to wrap this back needle. So wrap it. So come around the back and wrap and let it sink down and it will go in between the two. Do you see that? And so you're just going to pull this one down, the one that's in behind. And when you flick it forward, you're going to collect the yarn that just fell between the two. And you're going to flick forward. It's like magic. And then push the needle up to get more yarn onto it. The shaft size of your knitting needles is the size of the stitch. Now we're doing a twist and transfer. So what I want you to do is just drag it to the top and use this finger to stop it from popping off. And when you go to put this back onto this needle, you want to come around underneath. And I'll demonstrate this a few times and collect it like this. So this is a twist and you're going to push, uh, slide it down this shaft and remove this needle. That was a twist and transfer. Now we're going to do this again and we need to do it. So it has 15 loops on this. So you're just going to go in, you're going to wrap around the back. Let the yarn fall between the needles. And when you move it down, keep the tension and you're going to flick that yarn through. Okay. Just use this finger to stabilize it from popping off the needles. And when you go to rotate, you're just going to shift and pick up underneath and move it back onto this needle. Okay. So in, I'll keep going slow. You can fast forward if you already know what you're doing. Wrap, flick, and transfer. Now, when my mom showed me how to cast on when I was a kid, she showed me a different way and always the first row looked insane. It was always too wide and it was because of the way she was showing me. So I learned this way on YouTube from a different host many years ago and uh, it makes the ending and the beginning of your project look in sync. So you're just going to go in, wrap, flick and transfer and just keep moving it down your shaft. And again, if you got it, you can just put me on pause and fast forward. There's video chapters in this video, so you can access that in the free descript uh, video descriptions to see all those there. So you can see all the different steps that I do. And once you get moving on this thing and there comes the kitty, <laughs> So I moved my uh, filming recording into my office instead of the different room. 
so it has full access to the pets. It does kind of get on my nerves though. She gets on the desk here and then she starts licking herself. I hate that. There's a window right above the filming here, so it's natural light. So I'm just flicking and transferring. And so when I do the multiples, I just want to keep them in groups of four. So I see four, I see another group of four and four, and, or you can just count if you want to. In my case, it was just 15. Okay, so get your 15 stitches on there and I will demonstrate what to do next. So I have my 15 loops on the knitting needle. So the 15 stitches total. So you're going to notice that it's really tight, but it's going to be the next row that you're going to see it loosening off. And then the row after that, you'll get a little bit more looser. So just because it only looks like a certain distance at this point, doesn't mean that that's going to end up being, it's got to relax. So we now need to take you back to the worksheet and we're going to be checking the list as we go. So on the worksheet, we're going to do row number one, and we're just going to do straight knitting. I know straight knitting from a gay host. <laughs> oh, Jeez, I make myself laugh sometimes. So we're going to do straight knitting for this row. And it just means that it's a knit stitch all the way across. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take this needle that I'm wiggling and I want to insert in the same position. So I'm going to insert into the loop and go in behind. And we're just going to wrap the yarn over like you have been. And you're just going to flick and pull that yarn through. And do you see how it pulls that more yarn onto this knitting needle? And I keep things relatively close to the tip and I just slide it off. And it will get easier as you go into the next row. This row is gonna be kind of tight. So you're just gonna to go to the next one, stay in behind, wrap, and pull through. So I'll do the rest of this, I'll stay quiet so you can concentrate. We're getting close to the end. Is your project done yet? <laughs> no. So we're just gonna go right to the end, transfer, like wrapping, transfer, and everything is on to this knitting needle here. And just you can spread it out a little bit. You can see that it has more flexibility on the distance it can go. And so you're just gonna turn your knitting needles around and the knitting needle that you have been playing with is going to be your next one to do. So let's go back to our instructions and let's check that off the list. So back to the instructions, just make it so that you can clearly see that you just did something. Now we're gonna do row number two, which was knit three per one, and then you'll keep doing that all the way across. And then the final three are knit three. So let's do this. So we're gonna start off with row number two with knitting the first three. So this is the knit stitch, it's just what you were doing. So just come in behind and wrap and you want to do the first three like this flick it forward and slide off so you have one do the next two and three So now what we're going to do is the purl stitch and the purl reverses the stitch look, which creates the lines in the project. So in order to start the purl, this strand here needs to be moved to the front of this. So wrap it around the needle and bring it to the front and let it rest. And so it'll be ready for purling. Okay, so you're in the back, 
move it forward first. And then instead of going here and staying in behind, you were gonna stay on the front and this needle will cross in the front. And this yarn here, you'll wrap it around the front needle instead. Okay. And then you flick backwards. So just go down and flick it backwards so it stays on the needle, just like you see there, and you shift up. And now the next three are going to be the knit stitch. So this has to be moved to the back side first, and the next three are going to be in the knit stitch. So we have one, two, and three. And now we have to back to the purl. So the purl, we have to move this yarn forward. So bring it around that that needle, stay on the front now, and go in so that this is in front. Wrap and flick back. So that was one purl, and now the next three are knit. So move this back to the back side, and the next three are in the back. So it's a knit stitch, so one, two, and three. The next one is a purl, so move this yarn forward. Stay on the front side, wrap, and flick back. And now the last three stitches that you have here are all gonna be the knit stitch. So you don't need to count those, but the, it is the last three. Okay, that was row number two. And so you can just space it down a little bit. Don't go too hot crazy because you need to push it back up and you're just gonna switch hands and put the needles reversed in your hand. So this one will now have the there and now this one's empty. So let's begin row number three. Let's do row number three. So you'll notice that the odd numbers on this particular sample are always the knit stitch. So you're just gonna start and you're gonna do the knit stitch all the way across. So this one does not require counting. So just continue to go. And so this will help you really master your skills if you're learning to knit because it's just repetitive and you don't need to count. So I had a few comments of people telling me that I should be teaching you how to do continental knitting. My mom showed me this when I was a kid and actually my first ever project I did was a hammock for Barbie. <laughs> no, I wasn't a special kid, um, but that's what my first project was. And my mom never got too much into the knitting with me. And so a lot of the skills that I picked up in knitting are based on you know having access to free educational tutorials to teach me. And really for a crocheter going to knitting, it's a bit of a hand motion difference and it's a bit of a challenge. And so I'm not gonna deny that, but some people are bi in the sense that they can do both pretty easily. Me, I'm a little rusty with my knitting. Well, pretty much rusted out. So that was number three of just the knit stitch. We're gonna turn and we're going to move on to number four. So in row number four, we're back to counting our stitches again. And it's the same thing that you already did in row number two. And so when you start, the first three will be the knit stitch. So we'll start and do the first three as knit. So one, two, and three. And now the next one is a purl. So move this yarn to the front, stay on the front of this one, and wrap and flick back. Now the next three are knit, so we have to move this yarn to the back and then do three knit stitch. So one, two, and three. The next one's a purl, so move the yarn forward. And now the next 
next three are knit. So move the yarn back first. So one, two, three. The next one's a purl. So move the yarn forward first, purl, and flick back. And then the final three that you have left are the knit stitch. Okay, and that completes row number four. And let's switch our hands and move to row number five. So row number five, it's a straight knit stitch again. So just going across. So every other row is just a knit stitch. So you don't have to count. So you can come and gossip with me if you want to. I think the problem with uh, being a, a knitting or tutorial host of anything is that people always have a better way and they like to voice their opinion, which is fine. Um, but, you know, videos are, once I recorded this this morning, it's basically in stone. And so things that I've learned along the way, I find uh, I kind of get rid of videos when I learn a better technique. Sometimes I leave both on just because other people may have. Um, be doing the same way but as I learn a skill more and more and I realize that some of the steps I do are unnecessary or maybe they could be done a better way so I think it's part of the educational journey um, for anything is that you kind of learn simpler ways of doing things or or maybe you just realize you don't like it at all and you just you know burn the needles or yarn <laughs> and so this was a straight knit stitch from your gay host today and usually I never say that kind of stuff, but it's funny. Knitting kind of drags the angry out of me. <laughs> okay, so that was row number five. And row number six, we're going to be now switching our stitches concept. And we're going to be going into something new. So row number six, we have knit the first one, then purl, and then knit three. And then in the bracket here, you're going to purl, and then purl one, knit three, purl one, knit three. And then the final two stitches that you'll have left, the second last one will be purl one, and then this is K1, which is knit one. So we're gonna be doing this across for row number six. So I kind of shift things back higher to the needle because it's easier. And the first one is going to be a knit stitch, so you're staying behind. pick. The next one is going to be a purl. So we're just going to wrap the yarn around the first needle to bring it back to the front and purl, wrap and flip back. Now the way that I remember it is now the next three are knit and then purl one, knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one. So that's all I'm just going to remember how to do this when I'm counting. So we're going to knit for three. So we're going to say one, two, and three, and then purl one, so move this yarn back in front, wrap, and drag to the back, and then knit for three, so move the yarn back, and do three. So we have one, two, and three, and then purl one, knit three. So you're really ultimately looking for the two stitches left. Okay, so you got two now. So you're going to purl one. So your second last one is a purl one. And then you're going to knit the last one. And that was row number six. So this changed the idea. So whenever you're turning around and just doing the straight knitting stitches, that's where your texture is appearing. It may not be so obvious now because we're still at the beginning stages. So let's begin row number seven. So in row number seven is just straight knit stitching. So you're just gonna knit all your way across. So I think as a beginning knitter, I would still classify myself as a beginner even after all these years, is that I need stitches that I don't need to count once in a while just to give myself a bit of a mental break because I'm trying to learn the, the motion of the stitching needles or of the needles in my hand. I have to say though, I was knitting for several hours last night doing that other sample. So I'm looking a lot more smoother because I haven't actually picked up a knitting needle since probably 2017. 
you know, when dinosaurs are around. So this is gonna be ending row number seven soon. And that's it. And now we're gonna turn and work and begin row number eight, which is the final of the repeat going across. Okay, row number eight is that same one that we just did. So um, it's going to be a knit one, and then purl one, and then you're back on the threes again. So let's move this yarn back and knit the next three. So we have one, two, and three. And then you're coming back and purl the next one. And then move this back and knit the next three. Okay, and then we purl the next one. So move the yarn forward. And then we have the next three. So we have one, two, and three, and that should leave you two knitting the R two um, loops on the on these needles. So the next one's going to be a purl. So you're going to purl the second last one, and then the last one is going to be a knit. And this is the whole sequence then done from rows one to eight that you continue to repeat over and over and over. And so when you're looking at it, the way that I show you is that this is only a right-handed video. Apparently showing left-handed uh, crochet or, or knitters in knitting is not the same thing as flipping a camera. So you're going to see that it's gonna start coming out here. This color may not be so obvious, but you may see the, the vertical lines. And so what we just did is that these vertical lines that you see here have been shifted to here and they'll appear more and more as you go. So let's just uh, quickly recap on what we're doing. So now you're going to go all the way back to row number one. So you'll knit and then do rows number all, all the way back to eight. And you continue to do that over and over and over until the end. And um, this is just a really neat concept in order to do it. So I would do it if you're starting with knitting, I would actually end. So once you get your sequence done and you got the length that you want, I would do the final row as a knit cast off. So I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. There is a knot in my yarn. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's just spare yarn that I have from the studio. So I'm going to do a knit cast off and I want to begin and I'm just going to wrap the yarn and pick it up like this. Okay. And I'm going to slide off. I'm then going to do the next one, wrap the yarn, pick up, and I'm going to take this one right here, the first one, and put it over top of the other one and off the needle. This is called the bind off and how you cast off. So let me show you again. So you'll do the next one, you'll knit, okay, and you'll slide off. And then using this one, you'll pick up the first one and you'll bring it over top of the other one. So as you're moving across, you'll notice that it's going to continue to come off the needles. The difference of crochet and knitting is actually very simple, is that crochet, when you go to crochet, you're crocheting and starting a stitch and closing a stitch, where in knitting, you've been keeping the stitches open on the needles, so it's not until the very end of the project where you're going to close the stitches off with the bind off. So it's why in crochet it's very easy to frog or to rip things out because you're opening and closing the stitches where here in knitting, if you drop a knitting loop, it becomes a big deal. So 
So I haven't broken a sweat yet. Um, it's a really nice, easy concept to do it. Um, I did try doing this without writing the, uh, the, my, my sequence out and uh, trying to keep a mental note on where I was, but I was getting distracted by the television. So I just dropped my here. So I just want to be very careful. Okay. And I want to just put things back on. accidents do happen for sure so try not to let it get you down because you won't be the first person and the last person to ever do that So eventually you come to the end and you'll take this one up and over and you got to be very careful here. So see this open loop. Um, what you need to do is that you need just to trim the yarn that is going towards the project itself. So trim the yarn long enough so that you can get it through. And what I'm going to recommend, just pull out your knitting needle. Okay. And just push it through the loop. Okay, just push this through because then that will lock onto itself. And then I need you at this point is just to put this into a tapestry needle to hide in your ends. And so you'll notice a good side and the wrong side. The wrong side looks more like straight garter, or garter stitching. So this side has the texture. So just kind of favor the back side of, of hiding in your yarn. Now just don't slide it between strands, uh, slide it between plies of yarn as well, and that will help you get it stuck. And when you pull the first time, don't change the shape of it by over tightening. Okay, and then you'll go back in the same direction that you just came from. And finally going back across. So you wanna do this with any loose ends that you'll have to make sure that you use a tapestry needle. If you just weave in and hope for the best, um, hope is not enough to keep that stable and you'll want to do that also. So just give it a good stretch and then you'll do that with the first one as well. And then therefore, when you have this project done, you'll notice that it will be like this and the chunky yarn really lends itself to being really quite fabulous. Have a good one. We hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Want to know more? Hit that subscribe now.